Welcome to the Gentleman's Talk, where the podcast talks about a man's battle with mental health, his personal experiences, and his journey to be a better soul. Hosted by James Dean Littlejohn. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Gentleman's Talk. Here I get set up. Guess what? Chin chin. Got a little ch- cheeky gin on the go. In my um, my gift from my good friend the Bilster, um, this is the gin version. So this is uh, this is the big glass rather than the mug. Hope you're okay. Sorry I've been away. Well, sorry but not sorry actually. Um, sorry because obviously I know that I'd like to help out, and and this is obviously a really fundamental part of my life. Um, and I do enjoy it, so I am sorry that I haven't been here to offer any advice, or I suppose give you any updates, or just some general chit-chat, if you like. Um, and then the reason I'm not sorry is because I've had some time off. I've had some good time off. I've had a long bank holiday weekend, tied in with the uh, yesterday off, and today's my birthday. Today I am 41 years on this good Mother Earth. Um that's interesting, actually. I just perked into my head. That, that, that's an old phrase, isn't it? And, I, and do you know, I, I'm going to just chuck this in there, actually. We do, we do call it Mother Earth, don't we? I wonder how the feminists would feel about that if we all of a sudden took that away from them and said, let's make it a neutral Earth rather than the good Mother Earth, you know? Um, because we always called it the Mother Earth because it was provided, didn't it? And we always looked at women and uh, mothers as providing. Um, so... But then they're trying to take away things like mankind and human um, because it says man in it. I think it's just a spelling contest, but the, you know what I mean? There you go. Anyway, I just sort of chucked in because that's how my brain works. So I was straight in there. Um, so yeah, so not sorry because I've had a little break. Like I said, my birthday today. Um, why am I on my birthday? Because I'm in good spirits and I actually felt, um, I felt, what's the word? there's a word I'm kind of looking for I wanted to do it <laughs> there's, um, there's me trying to think of a posh word I can't because I'm all frazzled um, but yeah I, I felt I felt in, in, compelled that's the word I'm looking for I felt compelled to do it and um, that was an enjoyable that to me is when this becomes enjoyable I could keep going on and on and on and on and um, you know I could I could dribble on almost to the point where I become boring I don't want to be that I want to be the guy that can offer life experiences and and stuff like that um you know and be but enjoy it myself enjoy the process myself so yeah here i am gin in hand happy birthday to me um a little sip on that one chin chin gin gin mm. that is fucking delightful as well i'm not gonna lie to you um and i had a, a nice pizza for dinner um and sit around with my family it was beautiful and um what I've been sort of, I've got so much to talk about though. That's the problem when you don't do this. I have loads of things that I've commented on, I've dealt with, I've, um, there's lots. So, I, and this is where sometimes I can get, I see like already now I'm talking to you and I'm trying to process what I want to talk about first. And then there's the other side where if I talk regular, I can keep up to date. So it's, it's, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's a, a double edged sword, isn't it? Catch 22. You probably never get it right, but that's what life's about, isn't it? Learning. So, do you know what I'm going to start with? And I'm going to start with, I don't know, I don't even know where to start really. So, kind of, like I say, I've had a mixture of emotions really. I've had quite a few conversations over this last week since I last spoke to you. Um, And obviously I took the little break away. But even when I took a break away, mental health doesn't stop, does it? It keeps on going. You keep battling the knockbacks. You keep battling things like that. And I was, I've been reflecting quite a bit because I've kept up with my routine. This is important. I harp on about this all the time. When you break the routine, that's when we get problems. It's almost like I was having a conversation with, um, with my, with my best mate yesterday. And, uh, he said to me, oh, you know, the, yeah, we were talking about sleeping and, and how important it is. And I was like, oh yeah, because you know, um, when you wake up in the morning, there's a chemical that he said that, you know, he said there's a chemical that's released and, and, uh, you know, that's what you're used to. So you're used to that as your clock, that's your body clock. And the reason being it does that is because, you know, it, um, 
it doesn't want you to get the shock of the alarm, so it naturally tries to wake you up. And I said, oh, yeah, I've researched that a couple of months ago, and I am a bit of a geek when it comes to that sort of thing, because that does interest me. And I was like, oh, it's cork. I think it's cork, cork. And I was going, cork, cortisol. And he was like, if you just pluck that out your ass, mate, I'm super impressed. And I did. I plucked that right out my ass. Um, so, yeah, it, and we were just having this conversation, and it was, um, we were sort of kind of, I was, I was just sort of kind of, battling a few things I was talking to my mates and then we were sort of kind of I was I was keeping up my reflection I was doing everything that I could do because it's really important to keep hold of routine if you don't keep hold of routine that's when you inherently get these problems you like you said you know you you have to remember that mental health is a constant battle um so you have to keep up with those routines sometimes you can take some of those routines away um if you want to, like I did, I took away the podcast, I took away work, they were quite intrusive things on me, they get my mentally stimulated, so I had to acknowledge, I needed a break from that mental stimulation, just dull down, just about got onto my phone to talk to my friends, um, just to keep the re-engagement, but I did keep up with reflection, and it was interesting, because as I get older, I suppose, and I was, like I said, I, I've reflected quite a bit, you do when you come up to birthdays, I think certainly as you get a bit older, Um, You forget. I mean, I certainly do. I forget I'm 41. And what does that mean? Absolutely nothing. Uh, And and age is just a number. And I get all that. Um, But you still you still have a little bit of respect. And I'm one of these stupid twats, really, that just don't want to ever act my age. I will constantly push myself. And I don't know. I, I, I think in the background, I had a little bit of a midlife crisis. It felt like this year. I had a brief one at 40. Um, you know, and I went, like I said, I went and bought a, a fucking race bike that, you know, and started doing stupid shit on it that, you know, you think to yourself, you're fucking 40, mate, switch on. And it is, I, there's a lot of men that do it. I know that. But yeah, so I kind of, um, but I was reflecting anyway. So I've I sort of kind of, and I, I was reflecting quite heavily. And what I was doing was reflecting, I suppose, on a different aspect of mental health for me. I'm feeling a lot more um, the pressures of life, if you like, are a lot different when you're an adult, and especially, I suppose, I'm I'm a father. So, for me, I've got you know, I, you the closest people I know around me know that I've got a lot going on at the moment um, with my family. So, but along with life, excuse me, along with life comes um, natural challenges, and they're the ones that sometimes you're not prepared for. And by that, I mean, we, we, you know, we, we all talk about workplace stress. We all talk about PTSD, whether something's happened and you've had a car crash or, you know, anything like that. You've kind of gone, you know, you've got your ADHDs, you've got your um, autism and you're born with those things. And, you know, we, we talk about all this all the time, but we don't talk about the general stresses of life a lot. And, you know... <laughs> It's really, really easy to think, oh, he's stressed because he's at work. But we almost always inherently forget about home life and how much stress that can bring. I mean, I can guarantee if you knew my news, you would know that no amount of stress in any fucking workplace or any mosh pit of fucking violence... Nothing can compare to the stress that is currently bounding around my head for my home life. So I tend to then, like, say this is where men struggle. We don't talk about that aspect quite a lot, home life. Whether you're, I don't know, you could be someone that's trying for a baby. You could be someone that's unsuccessful in just general relationships. Or you could be in an abusive relationship. You could be in a sexless relationship you could be in I don't know whatever you could be you could have children that are impacting you in their own ways I mean I've got a, a 16 uh, yeah, 16 15 and a, an 11 year old and the 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 dynamics of their own individual mood swings is, is crazy shit it's, I mean it's fucking barkers, bonkers mad and men talk about you know, fuck my wife or my girlfriend or whatever is a fucking loony tune. And they talk about this and we all talk about how crazy women can be. I'm not going to lie to you. You try fucking living with four of them um, all at different levels. I mean, I genuinely have, I'm very, very lucky, very lucky. I have an outside cabin um, that I've converted into an office. It's got a bar and it's got a fucking sofa and a cinema style screen on it. So I sit in here a lot. I literally... You could, bar the bed, probably live in this. Um, But I do it because you need that space. I mean, I I interact quite a bit, but the fucking crazy shit that goes on, and we don't talk about that stuff that happens at home, at life. 
and you think to yourself, I'm, you know, some of the shit that's gone on in my life in the last six months has all revolved around home life. And then we all go, oh, how's your job? Is it easy? Or is it hard? Or fucking hell, you're in a bit late. Oh, I'm in a bit late, mate, because, you know, my fucking, my daughter decided to have a fucking absolute fucking nutball job at 12 o'clock or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Or something's happened and you think to yourself, I don't know what I've done wrong. Or you get shouted at the amount of times I get fucking shouted at. And like... It's craziness, and but it's not just that. It's the like one of my daughters. She absolutely fucking bless her. I love all my kids, by the way. My kids are my life. I absolutely love them. I mean, on a vast amount of their growing up. Um, but I, I, I do, I appreciate this because it's to me it's fun because it's I class it as a challenge. Um, but I've got one daughter who who's absolutely incredible, and um, she can literally come down and be you know literally give me the fucking scours almost want to stab my face off scream in my face and then another time she can go upstairs come back down and she can go um you know hi james she calls me james which i think is hilarious and and I, obviously i'm i am actually her real dad uh, but she calls me james and she calls uh you know my wife her real name i think it's funny i i do i think it's funny it's almost like you know if you if you had a dad called dave you, you're gonna 100 percent call him fucking dave every day you're not gonna call him dad are you um you know so I do get this. I was raised that I always call. I always call my mum and dad. My mum and dad. I always have. Um, and when I'm really fucking like you know, sort of asking for money and stuff, it's mummy and daddy, and I'm fucking forty. So, but you know, the mood swings that go along is Barker's fucking mad. It really is. So I need that space. But oh, anyway. So I was reminiscing quite a bit. I took a bit of a tangent there, so I apologise. Um, so much so, I think I need a fucking sip of gin. Um, Oh, that's fucking delightful. Um, and I, I was thinking the other day, and um, I, I obviously I reflect quite heavily. I think as I get older, you know, like you said, you do a lot of reflecting anyway. And I think it's because I incorporate it in such a fundamental part of my day. Like, say, three times a day, guaranteed, every day, I go out for a walk and I reflect. Whether it's music, whether it's just silence, I constantly go out and I reflect. I use that quiet time away from it amongst nature music on and I do reflect a lot and it's taken like I said three months of constantly doing something to make a difference and it has worked I I I, I feel weird when I don't do it and like I'll get to like nine o'clock but shit I haven't walked the dog my body instantly says you haven't walked the dog and you haven't given yourself that morning reflection um I think as I was younger, I think the morning reflection aspect was certainly a total different way of looking at life. I didn't reflect on much when I was younger um, in the terms of mental. So, uh, you know, my reflection was certainly a different way. But I've incorporated it, you know, into into an adulthood, I suppose. But I was doing a little bit of reflecting. And uh, and I was like, fuck, it's really hard being a parent. And uh, And I actually remember, and I still was a bad, not bad son, but I was a bit of a rebellious handful right up until I got to about 30, I must have been about 34, 30, 33, 34, I think I started to grow up. Um, I think I started to grow up. And it's only really been the last two years where I've kind of matured, but I've still got some fucking deep bits of uh, fun ready to go, but I have matured a lot. And that's probably because of the way that I'm looking at work health like, um, Excuse me, that's probably the way I'm looking. Because I'm lemonade and I'm drinking gin. I love gin, but the repercussions on the burps are not good. Anyway, so, yeah, I did a lot of reflecting. And I think it's really important to keep up with that. And I do keep up with that. I feel different when I don't do it. So what I've started doing is, is keeping up with it. But what it's made me do now is not just reflect on my mental health, but actually reflect on what causes my mental health and I was reflecting quite a bit and it made me laugh when I it's a story I must tell you because it sort of kind of epitomizes really and I can give you probably as much subject detail as, as I can to try and p- draw you into the scene that I was when I was younger in fact there was two scenes actually that I think were hilarious and I must share them because I think that if something's funny um, I think it's funny Um, and it's worth sharing it just I think just puts the reality in the context of what it's like to be a parent but at the same time it also puts you in the mindset of a young boy so and and I think it's really it made me it's making me smile now because I know that what I'm about to tell you is a is a genuine story and and like I said it, it it 
epitomizes just being a parent and obviously this doesn't refer this is no reference to what i've experienced as a dad um but i experienced similar things oh you can imagine i've got three girls so that's three lots of periods that's three lots of mood swings that's three lots of you know whether they go on the pill or whatever there's loads of other things that's three lots of people in different levels of education but all as catty as fucking hell um and then also you tie that into my uh to my wife who um the other day we've got this uh absolutely amazing girl staying with us she's she's massively supporting my daughter and um she's staying here and he, she even came into me and she was a right fucking bitch and i and i've kind of got to the point where i understand now this is how you get as a man um to, to try and like dodge the minefield that it is having four women in your house i've kind of learned when people are on their periods and when they're not on their periods and that's kind of i know that's quite a thing like i don't know maybe you class it as a crude i wouldn't say it's crude it's a type it's a natural thing but there's some of the shit i see on the internet you can fuck off if you think that um anyway i'm going to say the story so when you, you kind of learn the adaptation so you can tell when one one's really happy you know that the following week they're going to be on their period and they're going to be moody as fuck and then the following week they're going to be really fucking hungry and that's kind of the the pattern you get so you can kind of judge the characters of my three girls um, on on the basis of where they sit obviously it's a little bit difficult for my wife you know because she doesn't kind of she doesn't have periods um through, through the contraception side of things but what she does do is get everything else with it apart from that bit so she gets the pains and everything else just not the uh, the release of eggs, shall we say, politely, politely. So for me, that's okay. That was fine. I get three. I get one week's reprieve because she normally falls in line with the girls. That's what she does. However, we've had this girl staying with us, looking after. Um, she's been staying. She's absolutely an amazing girl, and we kind of, sort of, kind, you know, we kind of look after her uh, and help her out and stuff like that as much as we can. And uh, she she's been here for like four or five weeks now. It's absolutely amazing for my daughter as well. So. Um, and anyway, my wife's now synced because she's in the house. She's synced with her. So now I don't get a reprieve. I get somebody is attacking me most days. Um, so, yeah, I've been reflecting quite a bit. So, and it sort of kind of, anyway, it brings me on to that sort of kind of learning patterns and stuff like that. And anyway, the story that I'm going to tell you, so there's two stories. And one was when I was, um, I think I was a lit. I was about twelve. I think I was, and um, my dad was obviously my dad. My my dad's an amazing guy. He's absolutely fucking amazing. I, I God, I you know I do apps. Anyone that knows me knows I love him to bits. I absolutely fucking do. He's and we never really had much of a relationship when I was younger because it, you know military background and uh, very structured growing up. Not a bad thing's given me what I've got now. And to be fair, I probably needed structure knowing what I've got with the the. the um, you know, the ADHD, I think that that's probably, you can hear stories, um, you know, I hospitalised my dad, I didn't sleep for that many days in a row, and and I would only sleep in between my mum and dad, and, um, you know, there was, so my dad went through a fucking hell of a lot of shit, and he was obviously in the military, so still had to function as a soldier on a daily basis, so you can imagine the pressures that we don't talk about, and this is the home life pressures. And I, I reflect now quite heavily on being an adult and what I was like as a child. And also my experiences with my own children. Although they don't transfer and relate in terms of I'm a boy, so I've got different things that I'm going to explain to you about. But it still transfers in terms of mood swings. We've all seen Kevin and fucking Perry go large. If you haven't, go and see it. And you watch Kevin... Um, you know, and it's a typical thing. You get to 13, 14 as a 12 to 14 for a boy is a fucking nightmare because that's when the tos- testosterone, testosterone, the testosterone, that's when the testosterone cuts in. And fuck me, you're either, you know, you're either fucking hand jobbing yourself off like 24 fucking seven or you're angry. That's pretty much the way it goes when you're fucking growing up. And, um, so you kind of, you, you, when you've got those two, three years, you're kind of a bit crazy. And I remember when I was reflecting, my dad was obviously, and my dad was a bit of these, one of these ones, he's very old school, you know, um, b- b- born in the 50s and, uh, you know, gone through the, the best generations, I think, personally, you know, absolutely incredible, lived through the fucking 60s, 70s and 80s. You, you couldn't have had a better fucking era if you fucking tried. He had it all. So fantastic kudos to him however you get the mindset of uh, i think they're called boomers aren't they he's, he, he must i think he's in the boomer or the, the one maybe even the one above no he's not the one above that i think he's a boomer um if you're going to talk about generational things 
And um, anyway, but he's not one of these ones. He's not really like I wouldn't go to my dad. My mum was also, an, uh, you know, she was a, um, a nurse. So, you know, if I had any medical issues, it was normally like, mum, you know, I've got this. And um, I remember this time when the first incident and, I, and, and I'd obviously I was, you know, you're a young lad. You're exploring yourself and all this sort of stuff. And I had this little um, like hard lump, if you like. I know what it would. I know what it is now. It's just a little bit of gristle. It's nothing. But it's it's tiny. But, you know. It's one of those things, and I've got it, and it's just on the on on the top or the base, you know, right on the top. Anyway, I could try and explain where it is. Anyway, I won't give you too much detail on that, but it's there. And I remember walking in, and I absolutely remember stood in front of my fucking old man. He's on the sofa. He's had a hard day, still in his fucking military gear, and he's thinking, "What the fucking hell does this boy want now?" Is what he's thinking. I, you know, obviously, I, I was young. I was twelve, but he's probably thinking, "What the fuck's he going to chuck at me now?" No, was I twelve? No, I was thirteen. And I turned around and I was like, "Fucking, you know, big man, you know, not <laughs> the fucking dad." I've got this fucking lump, and I just whopped me little fucking flopper out and said, "Here you go, have a look at this." And he literally looked at me as if to say, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> he literally said, "What the fuck are you doing?" And I can see it in his eyes. I can now cast my mind back. What the fuck are you doing, son? This is not what we fucking do. <laughs> and I remember him sitting there going, "Go see your mum." <laughs> I just remember it. But it's crazy how you how you can't how you. As a dad, you just don't know what to expect. We don't talk about the mental health of thinking, this guy's had a hard day at work. He's, you know, he's he's going through the fucking ranks. He's looking after soldiers. He's doing all this crazy stuff. And I'm not talking about the concept of life. But he's got all this. He's done long journeys. He was an hour and a half to work and an hour and a half back in all weathers on a motorbike because it was the cheapest cost then. And then all of a sudden his fucking son comes in. I've got a fucking lump here, mate. And it's like... I do this little thing now where my, my, my wife and my kids, they ask me these fucking crazy questions. And, and they always say to me, like, oh, I'm trying to think now. Um, they, I think they ask me, what's the fucking standard? Uh, there was, what's the standard temperature of the fucking radiators or something? Silly like. There was questions. And, and, and also she said, I, I've had these ones where normally you sit there and they'll go, like, you know, oh, I've got this noise from my car. Can you come and have a listen? Oh, fucking yeah, mate. Um, you know. I'm a fucking mechanic, mate, with supersonic here, and I'll tell you exactly what that fucker is. No, I'm not going to know what the fuck it is. Although, in my case, I probably would, because I have, I am a qualified mechanic. But in general, unless you've done that. So it wouldn't have been a silly question to me. It would have fucked me off, because I'm not a mechanic anymore, and I haven't been a mechanic for fucking 20-odd years. But I still know the basics. But you do, you get these questions, and they're fucking sometimes ludicrous. And I could just imagine my dad sitting there going, I'm not sure when I got my fucking PhD and a doctorate, mate. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure when I got this. I I don't know what that is, mate. It's probably not something... And I know in my eyes, I'm probably thinking, well, is it normal, big fella? I just want to know if it's normal. If you got one, because if you've got one, I'm fucking cool. If you haven't got one, let's get this shit checked out. So I was probably being a little bit proactive. However, the generational side of things, again, raised in the 50s, you know, I struggle now to, to get the old man to take ibuprofen. He will not fucking take any tablets. I don't fucking need it. You're literally, your fucking leg's falling off, mate. You need some sort of painkiller. Nope, I am fucking good. And you could be dragging a fucking woolly, like, gritted up nub up a fucking hill and he still say he's fucking good. That's a generational thing. Whereas me, I'm going... This don't look fucking right, big fella. Not sure I should have a hard lump here. I've not seen this on any of the fucking porno magazines. It was early. I was born in 81. I've not seen any of the fucking porno magazines with little lumps on them. I can't physically see mine, but I know it's there. So, you know, I'm thinking in my head, I'm going to have to go and find someone who's done something or I'm going to have to try and show it. And I don't want to show it because it's not my fucking back. Anyway. So that was the first scenario of mental health. And that's where we talk. And, and as I go off on a tangent here, it was more about the fact of like, you know, this, this, the, the levels of questions that you sometimes get, it, it sometimes can baffle you. And I was asked a question earlier on and, and it was random as fuck. It was like, um, how, wh- how do you make the colour blue? And I racked in my fucking brain thinking I must be, I, I must know this. I should know this. This is fucking ludicrous. And then I was like... It's a fucking primary colour, mate, so you don't make it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there'll be some smart twat that will tell me you can probably make it, but I tried. I tried to look, I couldn't. So, but you get asked these random questions. We don't talk about that in mental health, do we? We don't talk about, 
like the the stuff we have to deal with as a parent you know the mood swings the um you know the battles you have in your own standard relationship you know christ my dog had the runs for six fucking days and i was like shit and everywhere all the fucking uh google things you know turned around and said you know five days you really should go and sp- speak to the vet and i was like oh i'm a bit fucking skint at the moment so I'm going to fucking do a stupid, I'm going to stretch this fucker a day. That's what I had to nearly think about doing. And luckily, because it was getting to like three days and I was like, oh God. I got to the fucking fifth day and, you know, we starved him for 48 hours because we had to try and starve the bug because he was really bad. He was still drinking and all the good stuff. So we did consult the vet over the phone. They said he's fine if he's not, he's not solid in five anyway. So, but you don't, but they're things you don't expect to deal with. You know, we we expect to be you know smes subject matter experts and everything don't we as fucking men and you think to yourself christ i don't think i can take i don't know how to deal with that and there's times where i've walked around and i've gone you know i honestly um i honestly don't know the question or the answer to that question there's you know um, i i had my wife she was and don't get me wrong she's done business so i know she's got a lot of pressures but she keeps asking me questions about finance and I'm just like, I, I, I don't know. I, like, I'd love to fucking know. I'd love to help you. But I know for a fact, my brain, if you tell me how do you, she was asking me about how can you pay if you're a solo fucking person, you know, a solo um, business, can you pay into a limited company? And there was loads of these questions. And I said, then I went, right, you're giving me enough information. that I've got enough to go away and Google and research. It's going to consume my life. It's going to fill my brain with more shit that I don't want, as well as dealing with maths which I fucking hate. So I'm kind of sat there, like, and it got to, like, I think the sixth day of being asked these questions, and I went, look, I have to be quite stern here. I don't think quite getting it. I'm being fucking polite and being lovely. But I don't know about finance. And if we're going to go back to what I did in maths, I got a fucking F, mate, in, in 1996. And I just about passed my fundamentals about two years later, and I've never looked at another fucking number in my life, mate. I don't like numbers. So I had to be quite stern, which is always a bit of a, not stern, that's exactly how I said it. But I had to put the point across, I don't want to, I, 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 I don't understand it and it will fucking stress me out, so let's not do it. And we talk about those things and then we talk about the children, we talk about trying to raise children, the dogs, the fucking kids are just crazy. I mean, I'm sat here in the fucking back garden trying to chill out and I've got kids screaming down the road, so other kids are stressing me out. You know, and you're kind of like, these are all things. And then not only that, go fucking tush. You're dealing with work and you're dealing with finance. You're dealing with your car insurance, your MOT. So you're constantly battling these things. And you have to offload at some point. And you have to. And I, this is where I come right the way back round to constantly reflecting, constantly looking after yourself well-being is is a such a daily routine it should almost be like brushing your fucking teeth you should be constantly looking after yourself whether that means reflection don't stop the basics don't stop reflecting on your day don't even if you are literally bollocks you've had a fucking threaders you know you've you've got some devastating news don't stop your routine don't because you will just dig a hole it will be harder to get out of You've got to keep up with it. Now, there's things, and I spoke about this at the start of the podcast, where I said we can remove, we can mitigate some of this stress by removing some of the factors that don't really matter. And this is where I talk about my learning experiences and how I'm developing over the last eight months into nine months now. And this is where I say, like, if I'm not in the mood to do a podcast now, I don't do a podcast. I, Like I said, I never listen to my podcasts back. I don't they're done I've helped I want live up-to-date experience and knowledge and I want to give that so I don't I don't kind of listen I, I never listen to my TikToks back I never listen to my podcast back I just move it's, it's in the past there's nothing I can do about it at, um, you know at best I can delete it at best but I'm just going to move away from it so I just do I just kind of go it's done there. Hopefully it will help someone. Even if it just helps one person, that makes me feel like I've achieved. When I look onto my little log and I see how many downloads it has, I know that it's achieved. But I want to be giving quality content. So this is where I talk about when we deal with these problems in life and we deal with, you know, we can take certain things out. So we can take out the workplace. That is a big, big thing. If you're not 100%, don't take out the things that matter, your friends and your family. Take out the things that don't really fucking matter. If you fucking die, 
your work does not give a shit about you. You are just a fucking number at the end of the day. Give 110% when you're in work. Absolutely. If you're getting job satisfaction, every day I go into work, I give 110%. I look for the next promotion ladder and I look for the next thing to change. I look for the next thing to um, advance. I, I absolutely, it's, it's what I do. Continuous improvement is is a big part of my natural life. I absolutely love doing it. So that's the thing we can do. But if you're not going to give 110% in work, then take yourself out of it for a little while until you can give 110% in work. You should always give 110%. I say, okay, the, I say 110% from my ethos. You should always give 100%. If you're being paid the right wages and you're being paid, you know, the right way. And I know that there's a lot of dynamics to this. So I'm not going to get boshed down and, and consumed by this as, as an argument because that's my ethos. I always go into work over 110%. That's what I've always done. That's my ethos. I'm, I've, I'm, I've never been out of work since I was, I started work at 13 when I was a paper boy. And, you know, I, I literally carried on work from 13 and I've been out of work for four months since I was 13 years old and I'm 41. So I've never been out of it. I absolutely fucking... And that four months that I was in, out of it was when I was... Um, the, the RAF... I made redundant from the RAF. And uh, service is no longer required. And, you know, which is not something you expect. And I had to transition across into uh, moving and getting a house and everything else. So um, I was ending one career to start another and uh, we had a baby and everything else. So there was a lot going on. So I took a four month break, although, um, you know, like I said, I had a job lined up and everything. So it was a family based decision, which we all should do. Um, But yeah, if you can mitigate some of these factors and by mitigate, I mean, remove things like work. Uh, You know, remove things like technology, remove things like social media, remove things like, um, I I don't know, uh, think, you know, alcohol, for instance. But there's certain things we shouldn't remove, certain things we should continue to stick with. And that is things like reflection, yoga, meditation, fitness, eating healthy, drinking plenty of water. Those are the fundamental things that you shouldn't take out of your life. Even if you do it for 15 minutes, if you've had a shit day, get out, go for a walk and reflect on why you've had a shit day and like i said you know you even you might walk into your house and get a barrage of shit okay well you like i do sometimes and vice versa it's it's it's, it can be a little hostile feral environment sometimes but i find it a bit fun tiptoe around pop on outside mate grab a gin fucking everything's okay but there's an aspect where you've got to kind of um, keep up with a routine for your own sanity your own well-being it's okay to sit on the sofa and go do you know i can't be fucking bothered but you have to be bothered because that walk will keep your spirits high. If you just keep slumping in the sofa with a can of beer and worrying about the stresses and then dealing with the home life and fucking everything else, you're just going to continue to just spiral out of control. You have to make a change. You have to want to, you have to stick with the things that we know makes us happy, which is sometimes a little bit of alone time, go for a walk, reflect, listen to good music, you know, take up a hobby, I don't know, yoga, Pilates, the, all these little things I talk about all the time. Keep up with them because they give you the ability to battle. And anyway, so that's the kind of thing that I've been learning as an experience for me. There's like a new zone, really, in the sense that here I am, like as a dad, and I've now got this new stress, but you have to function on a daily basis at work. So I'm on a leadership program, and today it was like, Bob, you know, we had to think of a one year project in 20 minutes between eight people that only met two hours before. It was a proper um, fish tank scenario. And um, we succeeded, you know, it's, it's one of those ones. But it was stressful. And you think to yourself, I've got all this stuff going through. I've got a big event happening for, for, um, tomorrow for my family, which is going to be, you know, could be, a, um, you know, we don't know how it's going to turn out. But you're battling these things in your head, trying to have a good time today because it's my birthday, but I'm in work. You know, thinking, oh, Christ, I want to go and take tomorrow off or I can't, but uh, the afternoon. So sometimes you do get a bit bogged. You do get a bit stressed out with it. But. You have to, like say, I still maintain that I keep reflection. I still maintain that I go out for my walks. I still keep that focus. I still listen to music. You've got it in the background, piping behind me. And 
what I'll do, you know, what what I, what I found is that that's just a new experience for me. Not a new experience for me because it's an experience I've had, but it's a new experience for me in the journey that I'm incorporated now. I mean, we all know we've spoken over the years about you know, our children causing fucking trouble. Christ, like I said, I, I cause trouble as a child. It's just what children do. Um, except now it's obviously a lot harder because people, every man and his dog's got a mobile phone and there's cameras everywhere. So it does become more of a, a the criminal side of things certainly taking effect. You can't get away with anything nowadays. But it is, it's, so it's a difficult time because you're dealing with a whole new world as a parent. And this is where I think that parenting for me has become different. And you can, ref, you can, I can talk to my parents about parenting and how did they manage me, but it's, it's a different world. Like me being raised in the, you know, the eighties and nineties, for me, were you, you could do whatever the fuck you wanted. I mean, I, I used to go off in the morning for, uh, with my mates on a cycle ride, and we'd fucking. I, I remember cycling up the fucking motorway to go to this dog's fucking home to walk dogs, or we used to fucking cycle twenty five, thirty miles just to go fishing for the day and mum was like fucking yeah crack on mate and we used to go out in the morning at like seven and not come back till like seven at night and then wolf our tea down they've been sat in the oven for fucking three hours cold and that was just what we did we couldn't do that nowadays you can't do anything because every fucking man dog woman whatever has all got cameras and they're filming everything that don't look right i'm gonna fucking film it so it's a different world and then not only that you're dealing with the pressures of if you had a bully for christ's sake you know you had a bully. The bully was normally at school. You rarely interacted outside of school, so you got reprieve. Now social media has given us the dynamic that, you know, you can't get away from it. Bullying is 24-7. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, how do you do that? And how do you manage that as a parent? Do you take the phone off the kid? But now the kid needs to be in the social group because otherwise it feels an outcast. You're battling loads of shit. Oh, Christ, I've now got fucking predators online. Oh, Christ, I've got porn online. Oh, Christ, you know, and you're like, fuck, it's a, it's a minefield. It's a minefield we don't talk about. And that's not just, I'm not saying that it's, it's, it's any special, but it's just an, add a, an added stress as well as relationship stress that you have through kids and just general relationship stress that we all endure. Um, as well as your own battles, like, Christ, I'm battling my own anxiety, I'm battling my own progression, I'm battling my own fucking weight at the moment, you know. i got my own, so my head's a barrel of fucking shit, and you've got to, you, so you've got to manage yourself effectively. You've got to keep up with your routine, and that's where I constantly talk, and I was, like I said, I was reflecting quite heavily on this, and that's why I think it was a really good story for me to churn on about, because it's just something we forget about. We don't really think, and I've got, Christ, I've got, you know, I've got two very close people to me um, that have got their own family issues and have caused their own situations in their own family. And they're men that are just, I know about it, but I guarantee 99% of their fucking, their friendship group won't know about it. And I say, you know, because it's a small, it's a small thing. But at the same time, it's not a small thing for the man going through it. It's, 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 it's fucking huge. It's, it's literally huge. So you want this guy to be promoted. You want this guy to be performing. You want this guy to perform emotionally, sexually, DIY Dave. You want him to go out to work and earn the money. You want him to be Mechanic Mike. You know, you want him to be fucking Plaster of Paul. You know, whatever. You want him to be this person, so many characters. And then you wonder why, you know, we get this inherent fucking problem with society where they think men are fucking like, oh, you... Men are like uh, multi-personality because you want us to be multi-personality. And it's a battles. And I think about my friends and I've got my own stuff going on. And every now and then I'll reflect and I'll go, fuck, how is he? And I'll have a good conversation with them when I reflect. And I think that's another important aspect to reflection is it does give you time to actually insert yourself in the head of your of your own head and get rid of all the the shit in life i don't take my phone when i go for a walk because i'll look on fucking you know um instagram or whatever or facebook or facebook whatever you know is on tiktok i'll be fucking sat there and i won't re- enjoy the reflection i'll just put music on and that's me i fucking go off i'm as soon as i've done this podcast i can't wait to take the dog out in the evening air and that's it that's where it's important to keep up with those things because those reflection time will give you the ability to actually think about the people closest to you. And this is where I constantly talk about having a small network of very close friends that you really do look after because you will offer them the conversation. Like I will have a, there'll be times when I know my mates probably a bit fucking, I'm in a shit time and I'll just message him and 
give them a load of shit on the fucking phone and it'll be a bit of banter and it'll give them that reprieve to stop thinking about the pressures of life you know finance fuck what am I going to earn next year what am I earning this year what's my fucking debts you know I've been through that all when I changed jobs it's a horrible thing to go through and it's taken me 18 months to work fucking tirelessly complete a fucking degree and about 37 fucking courses to get to a point to push myself up to I could be in a place where I can so hopefully support my family. and But it's tireless and you don't get... I've been very fortunate. I, I've had rewards from my organisation for that, which is fantastic. But you don't get the deep down acknowledgement. You just look at the person who's just fucking how he's ambitious. Maybe he's got a hidden agenda. And that's what we forget sometimes. The hidden agenda might actually be he just wants to have a better life. Being ambitious doesn't always mean you want to take over the world and get millions and millions of fucking pounds. I don't do my TikToks because I'm like, oh, hopefully I'll get fucking famous. I genuinely do it because I care. I genuinely just want to help people. If I can offer a little inspiration, it's what I got through when I was going through my journey, um, you know, and, and on the good days, people used to send me little positive quips that you used to hear and I just wanted to be part of that movement be the person that someone goes oh, do you know what I'm going to save that because that's fucking true you know and that's kind of where I was aiming at, at. same as my podcast I don't really do my podcast because I want to get fucking famous I just like helping people um you know for me that's the most important aspect is to show people real life experiences and what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish on the little aspect of my story. So I told you there was two parts to my story, and, I, and I, I'll leave you on a little bit of a funny one because this is just craziness. Again, it summarises the craziness of the shit that goes through. Like you said, this is from a boy's mind. Um, this was me at 14. I thought, no, was I? F no, I was 15 um, at this time. And I was kind of a little bit of a late bloomer, if you like. So I kind of, um, I was, I, I was more interested in fucking, you know, uh, extreme activities and snakeboarding and all that sort of shit rather than fucking women. You know, wasn't really bothered about that until I got to about 16, 17. But anyway, I, um, there was this occasion and I was, I think I was about, yes, must have been about 15. And my dad, again, same, same scenario. And I remember he was in the, he was in the single armchair and uh, he was in the he was in the living room just watching the fucking news. It was about so it it must have just been. I think I'd had the day, so he'd just been out. I think he'd just come back from exercise actually, and um, he was shattered. You could see because yeah, that was it because his kit was all in the kitchen. And um, and I remember walking down so because he'd been away. I was a bit I'd, obviously. I think he went away for about four weeks um, on an exercise, um, and then when he came back. Obviously, you've got a lot to talk about as a child. You've kind of got all these fucking burning questions. You've got the embarrassment of you don't want to ask your mum because it's your mum. And, um, you know, you, you, your boy, you don't really sort of associate with girls. And, my, and I was the oldest. So, you know, my brother was two years younger than me. So at 15, he was 13. He was probably at the point where he was examined to see if he'd had a lump on the top of his fucking nuts. Um, on the top of on on the base of his fucking of his fucking penis, um, because I probably scared him for fucking many years. Going, I've got a lump here. You're probably going to get one because that's what we do with boys, isn't it? I probably said you're definitely getting one, mate. It's going to be worse than mine. Um, whilst I was probably burning his teddy or some fucking sadistic thing I was doing when we were boys. Um, but I remember. Um, so he would have been thirteen. So uh, yeah, I was I was I was fifteen. So. And I remember, so obviously you, you can imagine a 15-year-old boy, I was at a point where I was experimenting quite a bit, you know, I was not experimenting, but, you know, you're kind of, you're getting these new sensations in your body, everything's a little bit more sensitive. And anyway, this is, this, hopefully this will finish a little bit of a craziness. So you can imagine, I'm going to set the scene, you've got your dad, he's had a fucking hard exercise, he's, you know, he's been sleeping in a fucking tent with, you know, uh, probably a hole in them days, for a, a hole in the fucking floor for a, um, you know, a shithole, and probably trying to dodge... Um, fucking as many fucking stupid shit tasks as you can um but anyway so i walked in and i remember it was it was in the evening so he just obviously come back in i sat down on i sat down on the armbus chair and i said dad and he said yes son and i said uh i said why is it when i um rub my own nipples <laughs> do i get <laughs> do i get excited <laughs> and that fucking face that fucking face <laughs> is that face of disbelief. And I remember I spoke a little while ago about how the boys in the park were showing each other their penises. 
and I had that face of what the fuck are you doing? And I just remember him looking at me and going, he literally said what he always said. He said, go, go ask your mum. <laughs> and I just remember going, look at him going, all right. And I did, because I got the okay. It was obviously, mum's going to fucking know. She's be, be all an end all. And I remember going in and my mum going, son, I just heard. <laughs> she said, well. And then the story came out. I'm not going to go into the story of what it was. But it was absolutely, and, but you don't, you forget about this shit you have to deal with as a parent. And the, the little fucking aspects of like, and I'm seeing like those that, those stupid questions being asked and uh you know you, you sort of you, i remember my dad always saying to me I'll, I'll tell you when you're older and, and i do i literally look at him and i go I, I look in disbelief sometimes i actually look at my daughters and i, I literally say I, I have you genuinely just fucking asked me that question and i i do look back and this is where i think we don't change as a generational thing is you still i think no matter what generation you are whether you're a man and you become that dad you're always going to have that same look on your face of disbelief we're all going to have it um, and you, you might even transfer across to that disbelief and that i probably have the same actually the same look of disbelief when my wife asks me a question and i literally say to her have you fucking just asked me that fucking question are you actually a 42 year old fucking woman that's been on this earth and quite intelligent are you really that person or are you a robot because sometimes those questions can be fucking damn near impossible to answer so i don't think to transfer across you will have that same look and i think all men will have that look at some point in their life of just have i been asked that question do i have to answer that question how the fuck can i get out of answering this question i don't want to answer this question so it's a constant minefield, and this is why it's so important, I think, and this rallies me right the way back round again, um, to making sure that we do speak out, we do talk about our, opportunity, our opportunities, we do talk about our experiences, we do talk about our feelings and stuff, you know, I'm, I've got a nice little segment I want to talk about on my next one, it's going to hopefully come with a little bit of assistance, um, if I can, I'm going to do a bit of research on it, um, but ultimately, you know, being open and honest and talking and engaging with your friends is it's worth its weight in gold it, it, you know you can't you can't replicate a good that good feeling you have of knowing that somebody's there and, I, and like i said i had my birthday this morning and um i got voice messages um you know my dad my dad rang me at 10 past seven and sung me happy birthday uh, i had a happy birthday off my brother my mates uh you know uh even the bilster sung in a a happy birthday to me so you know, and it, and it's those types of things that, just like I said, I keep reiterating as much as I can. That it's about who's around you. It's about who you look after. Um, and, you know, we can't always give financial gifts. We can't always do that. I know. I appreciate it. But what we can always give, is, is which is free, is support or just an ear to listen to. And I think that's where it's so important of knowing we share these experiences, we share the problems we have, and we talk. Like I said, I'm quite actively, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to this Friday because I'm not celebrating tonight. Well, I'm having a gin, obviously, but I'm celebrating on Friday. Um, my mate Kieran's coming over and we're going to have a good old fashioned, uh, you know, little bit of, I don't know what we were planning to do. Oh, that's it. We're going to go down, and have a meal, have a pint come back to the bar and just have a, a chew the fat and just um have a good night fucking drinking gin till the early hours of the morning and it's a good opportunity for us to offload and talk and 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 i think that that's like an amazing thing because i know that it'll be good for him to talk about his family's experiences he's just come back from holiday and that's what they're for and i'll talk about mine and and that's what it's about it's about nurturing the right people around you so hopefully that was my little birthday gift for you little birthday podcast for you and like i say tomorrow i've got a little bit more of a uh, probably a bit more of a somber one but i'll I'll perk it up as much as i can by offering as much advice as i can um but yeah i look forward to talking to you thank you very much for listening don't forget to share like comment do whatever you've got to do uh to keep it going like i said you know i i know it's a bit sporadic but i'm uh, you know, I, I'm always here at least at least two or three times a week. And like I said, I'm always on TikTok and, and just general life. I have got a very busy life. So it's kind of juggling it all as much as I can um, to stay consistent, but also as well to offer proper advice. So thanks for listening. Take care. And uh, I will speak to you all very soon.